pleased to have Dan Plesak back on the program. How are you, Dan? I'm doing good. Hey, Rich, I love that. Get, I love that jab. Ken Rosenthal. Maybe how to just post a video. I don't know. No, <laughs> no, I, I, I wouldn't call that a jab, Dan. I'm just suggesting uh, career is, advice. Right? Huh? Yeah, you know what? This is going to be a, a wild trade deadline. I really think. I think there's like four guys, Rich, that are going to be in play. Go I think Sonny Gray. I think we're hearing a lot that he's being linked to the Yankees. That that's kind of the Yankees guy. I think you Darvish could be on the move. I think Zach Britton could be on the move. And I think another guy that – the Rays looked so good a week ago. They finally win last night. I'm not sure if they're in or they're out. And Chris Archer is a guy, I think. If, if, I still think the team that needs to go out the most to get a pitcher is the Dodgers. I'm a little worried about Clayton Kershaw on this back issue. It, it bothered him last year. He's missed some time. And I don't know about you, Rich, but when I think of the Dodgers and I think of them a whole lot better, I take them a lot more serious – with Clayton Kershaw, if you could tell me, if you had a crystal ball, Rich, and you could tell me that he's going to be back at the end of August and he's going to be in full swing and no restrictions, I'm in. I think the Dodgers can get to the World Series. If not, I'm worried like hell for the Dodgers. I agree. I agree with you, Dan. I just, I just, if you could tell me that you could really trust Alex Wood and Rich Hill in Game 1 and Game 2 if Kershaw wasn't ready – but, boy, I don't. That's just my personal opinion. I, 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 that's, I look at the Dodgers different without Clayton Kershaw. Well, let's just assume that Kershaw is back and they add Verlander, right? Kershaw yeah. and Verlander along with Wood and Rich Hill, uh, that, that, that's, that's all she wrote. Or, exactly. or, yes. or maybe they add Britain to the back end and do kind of what the Yankees did a couple of weeks ago, which is add arms to the back end so the front end is shorter. Yeah, I think what's what's going to be a little difficult with Verlander. He's owed twenty eight million next year and the following year, so wow. you're on the hook for almost sixty million. And listen, there aren't a lot of teams. The Dodgers may be one team that could eat some of that money. This is the problem if you're the Tigers, Rich. What we're seeing is day and age of trading right now. If you're expecting to get a lot of prospects back, then you're going to have to eat a lot of that money. But if you want to just say, hey, we'd like Verlander, and we're going to give you a couple of prospects back, then you're going to, they're not going to, then you're going to have to eat a whole lot of money. That That's just the way trading business is right now. Like, you got a $28 million price tag, and if you expect that you're going to get something really back from the Dodgers, then, boy, if you're the Tigers, you're going to say, we're going to have to eat over half of that, and then you may get something back. But if a team like the Dodgers are just going to take on that contract, you're getting nothing back. So, well, you know, yeah. i got, I got to tell you, Dan, I'm with Dan Plesak of the MLB Network. Look, it's not my money. But if I'm the Tigers and I'm sitting there seven games out of the wild card, eight and a half in first place, you've already sent J.D. Martinez packing to Arizona, then I am going to just say, okay, look, we made these moves, we made these decisions, let's eat the money and let's get as many prospects as we can Amen. for Verlander and Miguel Cabrera. Send him out too, and Kinsler, and just just raise it down to the ground, get all these kids back, and start building some for the old English day in Detroit. That's what I would do. Rich, I couldn't agree with you more. And, and you know what's sad? We could go back about six or seven years ago, and they've tried. Could you imagine if they would have had a Kenley Jansen and a Roldis Chapman, a Wade Davis? If, if the Tigers would have had a dependable guy in the ninth inning, mm -hmm. the last six or seven years, they would have won at least one World Series and probably two. And they've tried to fix it. They had Papa Grande. They went out and got Joe Nathan. They brought in K-Rod. They went every offseason to try to fix the ninth inning to get the best guy that was out there. There's just a fungus in that bullpen, Rich. And I, and I really believe that, like, there are some teams that third base has just been a hole for some organizations, right? And that has been the case with the Tigers with their bullpen. They have yet to find a guy, and I think the window, it's shut, it's closed. They're not going to be in the postseason this year, and I agree with you. It's time to look for five to six years down the road and just kind of – if you're going to go this direction and let J.D. Martinez, who is one of their better younger players, go, then I think the rest have to start going, too. Yeah, just let it all go. I yeah. mean, but it, but it's uh, Dan Plesak of MLB Network joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. It's tough to turn to a fan base and say we're, we're three. Well, I mean, well, the Tigers are seven out. They and they, and But it's got to be tough to turn to a fan base and say we're within three games of a wild card and uh, and we just decide, you know what, we're going to we're gonna send you Darvish packing if you're Texas. Or, yeah. you know what, we're just going to send um, 
I guess that that that, that would be the one that you're talking. Or Zach Britton, you know, you're right. four and a half out for the for the O's. Yeah, but you know what the O's though? I think you know what we've talked about this, Rich. You and I, with the last four or five years, we're waiting. Like, when is this starting pitching really going to bring them down? Right? We keep going. How do they keep doing it? Their bullpen is great. They've got Britton. They've got O'Day. You know, they've got Givens. They've got Brock and all this. But you know what? We've we've been the last four or five years going. How the hell are they doing this? They're staying in it with. They're patching these guys together. Tillman and Bundy and Gosman's finally found his way around a little bit now, but it's caught up to them. They just don't have the starting pitching. And I think the thing you got to be careful of, we're such in this mode of like tearing everything down, tear it down and build it because that's the way it works. But you know what you have to have, Rich? You better have a Chris Bryant. You better have an Anthony Rizzo. And you better have a Wilson Contreras. You better have players that step up. You better have a Correa. You better have Springer. And you better have El Tuve. Because you could tear down and build up and say, this is what we're going to do. And a lot of teams have tried to do that. But, boy, the guys that you get back, it's like the White Sox. Jan Moncada, the guy that they got back, that's the big piece for the White Sox. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't hit rich, I think the White Sox are going to be in the same boat now that they're going to be in five years from now, and that's just a mediocre franchise. Those guys have to hit the franchise changers, and Bryant and Rizzo have been that, and Addison Russell for the Cubs. Dan Plesak of MLB Network again. They're going to have full deadline day coverage uh, on Monday, and then uh, going to Cooperstown for the uh, Baseball Hall of Fame enshrinement ceremony. That includes Bud Selig, and I know obviously you've got a long history with uh, with Bud Selig being a Milwaukee Brewer, your All Star years with the with the Brewers. He was the owner of the team, and then he became commissioner of the sport. And I know you were also very involved uh, with the labor union, uh, Dan. Yes. Uh, are do, are there mixed feelings about yeah, Bud there, going? Yeah, home? there are because you know what? I was a player rep. Like what happened, Rich? I'm my second year in the big leagues, right? And nobody wants to be the player rep because we're going back now in the mid '80s, and that's when you know you were front and center, and all of a sudden you're in a blue collar town like Milwaukee, right? I'm 26 years old. I have two years in the big leagues, and all of a sudden I'm the player rep, and everybody in Milwaukee is blue collar as it gets. I'm getting ripped and bashed in the newspaper. These guys are waiting and looking for more money. But then it's guys like Paul Mauder, Robin Yount, Gorman Thomas, Cecil Cooper. You know, we've got to stick up for the old guys, and we've got to do all this. It was a really tough spot, and I was a young guy. And, you know, having to deal with that and getting called into the office with Bud Selig and, hey, what's going on with a lockout? What are you guys going to do? Is this serious? And you get put in a really tough spot. Uh, and, you know, I, I tell you what, I, I do have to laugh, though, because – if you would have told me, Rich, in 1986, 87, 86 was my rookie year, that Bud Selig was eventually going to be the commissioner of baseball, nobody in a million years would believe it, right? He was the owner of the, of the Brewers, car salesman guy. And, and, and I didn't realize until my second year in the big leagues, he used to walk the catwalk across County Stadium, like in the eighth and ninth inning. And I never do this till one day he told me, you make me a nervous wreck when you come in in the ninth inning sometime. And I'm like, I start pacing back and forth. And one night, Rich, like in the middle of 88 season, I took my last warm up, right? One run lead. And I look up there and there he goes, pacing back and forth. <laughs> and from that time on, I started getting nervous, Rich, because he made me nervous pacing back and forth. Hmm. So there are mixed feelings. In other there words, there are mixed feelings. Yes. Yeah, because I, because I, again, I, I, there is for me too. Uh, to be very honest with you, you know, I, I, and 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 obviously the wild card, the advent of it was something that he fought for, and here we are talking about all these teams that have a shot right now in the middle of the season. If there was no wild card, then there would be such a lack of interest. So that Amen. he does deserve to get. All the kudos for because as a traditionalist, I thought to myself, this stinks. I did but, too. You know, but it has improved, and I like what baseball has done to get two teams in in a one one game playoff. Sort of like I remember in my youth, the Yankees and the and the Red Sox playing that one game playoff that led to Bucky Dent. There were some great moments that could come out of that. But then that 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 ninety five season, I mean ninety four season, I mean right. how how can that guy be led into the Hall of Fame? Is well, you know, you know what? You know, I, I think when you look back at it, I, I think he was under tremendous pressure. I don't think Bud Selig actually, you know, maybe he was the face of everything. But I think behind that were George Steinbrenner and Jerry Reinsdorf. And, and I think, you know, somebody had to be the spokesman yeah. for that group of tough owners. And that's why it's such a tough job. And that's why not a lot of people wanted to do it. 
And Bud Selig had to be the bad guy. He was the bad guy, the fall guy. You know, a lot of people knock about the steroid era, right? Listen, everybody yeah. kind of knew. Did he turn his back? Sosa McGuire. Did they save baseball? Did they hurt baseball? You know, teams had to know. Every, and you know the bottom line is? I don't know what's right, what's wrong, but I do know this. I agree with you 100%. I was so against the wild card. I'm mm-hmm. thinking, you know what? Why do you want to water it down and, and dilute it? If there's something about the four divisional winners and expansion, but you know what? It's proven to be the best thing because if not, September would be awful boring right now, particularly now when you have a, you know, like the Nationals are blowing away. The Astros are runaway winners. The Dodgers are runaway winners. There'd be like two compelling divisions right now, the NL and the AL Central, and that would be about it. You're right. I mean, the, the Seattle, Texas, and the Angels right. are, 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 are 17, 18, and 18 and a half games they're out of gone. first place right now, but they're in it. Exactly. They're in it. Exactly. And we're going to be talking about the Diamondbacks. We're going to be yep. talking about the Rockies. Yep. The Pirates are back in the mix. I the agree. Cardinals might get hot. We're going to talk about 15 teams in the month of September where if this wasn't the case back the old way, we'd be talking about, well, four teams are gone already and cooled out, and we'd be talking about six total teams. Well, before you join, Dan, in the commercial break between hours one and two, I'm sorry that I was pacing the Rich Eisen show floor nervous about your appearance. I'm sorry That's about that. That's all right, Dan. Rich. You and me anytime. Okay. You, Take you got it. Take care. Thanks for the call. That's Dan Plesak of the MLB Network at Plesak19 on Twitter. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on radio stations across the country and audience. If you like that, please download our app. There's lots of fun things there other than just more of the videos you just saw. You can call us from the app. You can email us from the app. Just download it. Trust me, you'll enjoy it. 